Hi, everyone. Welcome to the coffee break. I am here with my good friend, Cosimo. How's it going? Hello, everyone. It's been great. So Cosimo does a lot of really cool things, and he's a really interesting guy on top of everything else. But let's talk about this whole thing of what your mind can really do. People say that the mind is limitless, blah, blah, blah. But Cosimo is actually proof of this. So tell us how the brain works, Cosimo. Well, so the first thing we need to understand is no one taught us how to study, just what to study. And that's why we created some blocks in learning. So blocks can be like feel anxious about something or like having overwhelming during the day when you need to do all those things that you need to accomplish. Or it can be like procrastination, one of the big things, distractions. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, many people basically think that all of them, all of those things are part of their life and it, they try to change them. They do everything they can sometimes to change it, but they never change it because they are learning blocks. They never knew that they created those blocks because they didn't know how to learn. Now, I can tell you, I am dyslexic, yes. And when my company told me, Cosimo, do you want to open an American location? I said... Certamente, <laughs> è un'opportunità. <laughs> well, I did not speak English, let's say three years ago already. And I was really scared to say, yes, let's go for that. One of the things that I thought was, Cosimo, you this, you're dyslexic. You never learned English in years and years of school. Um, so, I mean, you can't concentrate, you can't, you got always just always distracted. So all of those mm -hmm. things. And yeah. you, you must say, no, stay here in Italy. It's better for you and blah, blah, blah. And you know, all those things goes because <laughs> you have like all those ideas. Do you want to go? But you have that fear. Yeah. And on the other hand, fortunately, one other voice said, yes, it's, it's true. It's true that you never learned English, that you don't know English right now. And in school, in years of school, you never learned that language. And you're also dyslexic. But what changes now? is that you have a method that you can trust. Mm -hmm. And basically, when I came here, I learned 6,000 words in two weeks. So plus, yes, plus the grammar rules. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I and... still mess those up, and I'm a native speaker, so that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and for me, it was like making something not possible for me, possible, just because I had a method. And for me, it was like, okay, I need to make for people um, this. And so, I mean, I, would, I wanna make for people something not possible possible because mm -hmm. they always have the, some limits that sometimes someone else give to them or because <laughs> they put limits on themselves. Well, if right. you have a method, you know how to do it, you won't have limits. That's really amazing that you are, are talking about more like that we were never taught how to study. We were just kind of handed books and we said, okay, we'll figure it out. I mean, that's very true. That's how we're taught. Um, I know a lot of business owners out there are doing a lot of online classes right now. They're doing a lot of extra training um, or they're offering courses. What little piece of advice would you give them? Just like a tiny little slice of Cosmo um, style here on how they can improve their learning when they're doing these other online classes, like right now, what can you tell them? Well, the very first thing that comes to my mind, and that's actually what I'm applying is participate. So usually we are, we have been taught to be passive learners. If you notice in years of school, we just listen to people. We just <laughs> like, uh, stay there. And the question is how many classes do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> in school right now. <laughs> need to think about myself not many so the thing is but we remember those few classes that we were involved with we were participating we were like engaging with the teacher with the speaker and well you find myself participating to courses and you know that because we met through an amazing course yes um like asking or uh, answering to the screen. It's like seeing, seeing that person in a one-to-one. -one. In a one-to-one, -one, if they ask you like, how's it going? You don't answer like, hmm. Or <laughs> is it clear? Hmm. And do you have any questions? And you don't know what to so I mean. It's not the way you have a one-to-one, -one, right? Right. So, well, I basically stay engaged to the screen, answering 
to the questions that the speaker is saying and asking questions sometimes if the speaker doesn't ask, doesn't give you the possibility to ask them or really engage so pay, not paying attention just staring at, the, at that but having a conversation with what they are saying and the learning they are giving to me that's awesome advice because I, I think you're right i think a lot of us um, especially introverts, like we don't want to ask questions. We don't want people to notice us in these big trainings. We just want to yes. absorb the information and, you know, whether we take notes or not, we're not getting the full engagement. And yeah. that is so critical what you're talking about. Now, how do you feel about the term old dogs and new tricks? Like, have you ever heard somebody that wants your class was like, well, I don't know how much you're going to get out of it. Cause you can't teach an old dog, new tricks. Like, how do you feel about that with the human mind? Well, I first of all don't know what old dogs new tricks <laughs> that means. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. This is a, a this is an American idiom, meaning that um, when a dog gets to a certain age, like an old dog, you can't teach them anything new because they're too old to learn. But like oh, I think like a okay, puppy, puppies can learn everything, right? So it's like when someone's yes. like, "Oh, I'm too old. I can't learn old dog new tricks," right? That, so that's absolutely not true. Actually, I'm writing a book on uh, uh, like all the techniques that you can actually experience in learning. And one what? of the things that I was writing today, for example, is exactly the thought, I'm too old to learn that, I'm too old to do something. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you are never too old to learn. Now, the example that I was like uh, saying in this book when I was writing was this. Now, imagine this, you wanna change a flat tire of your car. Okay, now you're really motivated and you are eight years old or you are like uh, 10 years old or 15 years old or 18, whatever. If you go in front of the, the flat tire, but you don't have the tools to change it, are you able to do that with your naked hands? Of course. No. no. <laughs> yeah, maybe you need, to, you need to think about lifting the car with one hand and meanwhile, you need to screw the balls of the, right. the tires. It's right. not possible to do that. <laughs> but the thing is this, Without tools, you can do it. The thing is this, with no method, you can't study. It doesn't matter if you are 18, it doesn't matter if you are 80 years old, you can't study and remember if you don't have tools, if you don't have a method to do it, if you don't know how to do it, if you don't know how your brain likes learning. So it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of how. And I will conclude by saying that uh, it's, our how, our how is different for each person because its brain is different from each person. Mm -hmm. So the thing is this, when you get older, what happens for you is you start losing, let's say memory. That's actually what they think sometimes mm -hmm. um, because you don't use your brain so much, but actually you're tired of using your brain that way because mm -hmm. it's like uh, changing your flat tire <laughs> with no tools, at some point you will get tired. So right? <laughs> <laughs> the age, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, everyone can learn. So you brought up something kind of important with procrastination. I hear so many business owners, especially other creatives, that are mm -hmm. like, I just, I procrastinate. I don't do this. Or I do. They give you all these lists of things. How do you feel about procrastination? What do you really think the problem is? Okay, so this is something that maybe it's new for you, but the thing is procrastination is not a problem of, uh, okay, just a second. If I ask you a person, uh, why do you procrastinate? Usually they will answer this way uh, because I don't want to do it or oh, because <laughs> it's, it's so boring uh, because I, I'm not interested in doing that because uh, I'm afraid of the outcome there will be and that's why I wait till the end to do that. First of all, is an education that we received from years and years of school. That's one thing like okay. waiting to the last minute <laughs> to prepare for a test or <laughs> to get ready for an exam, first thing. But the reality is this, when people say, I'm not motivated, I'm not interested, it's kind of, it's, or I don't wanna do it. It seems that it's like a kind of laziness <laughs> of mm -hmm. not doing something, but I'm, I don't believe in lazy people. I believe in people that didn't know how to do it. Now, the question is, I can give you this metaphor and it's really easy. So let's say, how many times did you buy a book that uh, you wanted to read, but it was like left for maybe months on the right. same. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather watch Netflix than I would want to read that book about 
X, right? Right. So, and why that? Because your brain is thinking, okay, I get eight, 10 minutes today. Great. Now I need to uh, open it. I need to concentrate, but I want to get everything about this book because, because it's really important for me, every single detail. So basically the time you're thinking this is already like past eight minutes, eight, two minutes. <laughs> now I can do this today. Let's do it tomorrow. And tomorrow mm -hmm. becomes tomorrow. The baby becomes on vacation. You go in Italy on vacation. You want to stay on a book to read something? No. You want to visit Italy. I will go and read that book when I get home and I get in the mood of uh, working in something. Now, the thing right. is this. This person doesn't know how like, to do that faster. Otherwise, he would have done that. In other mm -hmm. words, means that if I tell you, I give you this book, you can read 50 pages in 10 minutes and retain all of them forever without going back on that book. Would you do it? Yes. Sure. Yeah. I would do it. Right. What changed it was the book. What changed it was your time, the time that you had to remember, to learn and read that book. No. What changed it was your method to go through. So mm -hmm. if you have a method and you know how to get through things, you will do it that faster. So you will not get bored. You will not be lazy. You will not get, you will not lose interest or motivation or energy. So it's always a matter, a matter of a method, a method or how to get through things. And people basically procrastinate because they don't know how. So on this topic of procrastination, you're actually offering a class that it's March 10th, right? Yes. On procrastination and how to, I don't want to say cure it, but how to deal with it, right? Yes, actually, you have to destroy that forever. Destroy it. Okay, that's an even better yes. word. That's like a harsh word, like destroy procrastination. Yes, totally. <laughs> and so you are, of course, a very giving person. Um, yes. What is what is giving or gratitude in Italian? What do you ringraziarvi? <laughs> oh, see, everyone learned Italian just now. Um, but you're actually doing this at a special, like, Cosimo rate because we're friends, right? And you want to help out my listeners. Yes. So I would like to, that, to give them 80% of discount. So instead of coming for $800, they can come for $159 and that will be amazing for them. So yeah. the thing is, kids never procrastinate. When they want something, they want it now. We are yes. not designed to procrastinate and we need to become <laughs> again kids. So in the course, we will have so many unblocked strategies, ways to do it. And I had hundreds of students that text me saying, wow, just that class in three hours gave me so much and give me back 50% of my time and my results. So it's like 50% uh, more of the results. So it's amazing. And for those of you that don't do math like myself, we're just going to look at this as an increase. If you can think of half or time and a half or however you want to think of that in your head, the way I look at it is no knowledge is wasted. I take yeah. all kinds of classes. I do all types of informational things because I want to learn. And if you get one thing out of any class, then you got your money's worth. I promise you that. So Cosmo, before we say goodbye, um, officially, is there anything else you want to share with people about either limitation or a method of doing something or just maybe how they can connect with you better? Yeah, sure. So the very first thing that comes to my mind is you need to remember that uh, everyone loves learning. You love learning. What you don't like is the process. If you, if you enjoy the process, if you know what the best process is for your brain, you're going to learn anything. And if you can learn, you can grow. If you grow, you will expand and you will give more to yourself and to your life. Remember that you have a genius. You just need to release it and your life will be amazing. It will be more amazing than already it is. Thank you so much, Cosmo, for being here today, and we will catch you next time. Thank you. Mwah.